Okay. <clears throat> so we finished yesterday with averaging, and we finished with a little example. So we had some, I cannot remember exact the, the exact equation, but we had a slow variable that was coupled to an oscillator uh, that was somehow, I think there was an x squared here, uh, that was fast, so this oscillator was moving around here, if this is q and p, <clears throat> and we said that we can that we can find reduced equation as an average over this slow equation over the measure induced by the fast dynamics. Okay, so the measure in this instance, since this is just a linear uh, oscillator, we know because we know the oscillator just goes around like this with a frequency that depends on x. Okay, um, so we can just integrate over time here, which is a way to parameterize this invariant measure. So what we ended up with was some x dot was an f of x, which was just the f of x and p and q over the invariant measure that's conditioned on x, because the frequency here, how we, how we uh, go, go, go around here, depends on x. Um, and now I write this d, well, this is dq and dp. Um, so for this linear oscillator, it's quite easy to find this invariant measure. It's just you know the, the delta measure, so on the on that on that circle. But let's say we don't know what this measure is. We can't solve this equation here. Then we can still make sense of this equation by invoking Birkhoff's ergodic theorem and saying we just evaluate this as a time average. So we could say this will be the time average. Time goes to infinity of f of, and again I should write this as my capital X here, uh, f of x, now I have p of s, q of s, ds. So even if I don't know it, we can measure it somehow if we're given a time trajectory. We estimate the measure through the time average. Okay. So today, I want to start talking about stochastic model reductions. And this will have two aspects. Well, we'll have two methods. We'll have the method of averaging and then an extension, which is the method of homogenization. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Um, so, I first want to start with looking just at stochastic systems, okay? And then later on I want to go back to deterministic systems, but employing the same methods that we develop now, okay? And I show you, I give you a hand, kind of a sort of physics approach to it, why it's possible, and why one would like to do that, or would want to do that in, for climate problems, okay? But first of all, let's start with averaging, and let's look at systems that are now SDEs. So we have a slow variable x, and we have an f of x, y, dt, and here we have a g of x, y, dt. So this case we have, and let's put a 1 over epsilon here. So this is a case that we've dealt with already, okay? Where we said, okay, now this system here supports some invariant measure, but let's make this system now Stochastic. So let's add, and you will see why I write later on, why I write a 1 over square root of epsilon here, times a noise term, how did I, beta of x, y, dwt. So wt is again a Wiener process. Okay? Um, so now we're looking at systems of this form, and we assume, as we did in the in the deterministic case, we assume that the fast dynamics generates an invariant measure. But since this is stochastic now, we actually have, think of it as, think, think of this like as an einstein uhlenbeck process. So now we have a real density with respect to Lebesgue. Okay? So we assume that the fast dynamics
is ergodic. And we have some measure uh, rho infinity y that could be could depend on x, conditioned on x. Um, and <coughs> Uh, uh, associated with the fast dynamics. Okay, so now the question is: Well, what you can what what you can show, or what we showed here? I mean, we just stated it that we can now find an averaged equation f of x, where f of capital X is the integral of f naught no f of x y, and now averaged over this invariant measure that's induced by our stochastic process. Okay? So it's exactly the same as here, but now we have actually now we have a proper density. Okay? Um, so I want to derive this equation. That's sort of I mean we didn't we, I didn't show any proofs of this, but um, it sort of makes sense if you just say okay we average over the measure here and we get something. So the X dynamics here was is deterministic. There's no, it's not deterministic because the Y obviously feeds into here, but there's no noise term here, and we end up with something that's entirely deterministic, which is our average dynamics. So this is, you know, what you said. Well, we only want to know the averages. We're not interested in, you know, the little wiggles here and the little realizations. We want to know the average. That's what we're after. Okay. One of you kind of made that comment. So this is this is the equation that tells you, okay, that's kind of the average behavior. Yeah. Um, but I want to derive this equation now with our machinery of the generator. Okay, so I want to derive because that's a, that's a machinery of of, uh, of these linear PDEs that will be helpful if you want to extend this method to uh, uh, cases where we might want to say, well, okay, it's not quite the mean behavior. There should be some noise disturbing it. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do now is put a theory. And we're going to make a choice, and we're going to do this in the backward Kolmogorov picture. So this is the equation that describes the propagation of the temporal evolution of expectation values. You could do it in the Fokker-Planck equation picture as well. This could be homework for you. You get exactly the same result. Okay. Okay. So that means we introduce a V that be, depends on X, Y, and T, and that we define as the expectation value of some observable, let's call it phi, of X of T, Y of T, given that X of 0 was X and Y of 0 was Y. Okay, so this is our expectation value, and we know that the evolution equation is given by the following Cauchy problem, and where v of x, y, and zero was our phi okay. of x and y. Okay, so let's write down this Cauchy problem. And then you see there are lots of epsilons here. We need this epsilon to make this equation fast. Right? If epsilon is small, y is fast compared to x. So it means in one time unit of x, y has already explored all its available phase space and has equilibrated such that the statistics of y is now determined by this invariant measure, invariant density rho infinity. Okay. So x does do hardly anything, and that time y explores everything and relaxes, right? You have a long time trajectory. If you take the histogram of this long time trajectory in y, that's done during one slow time step in x, you do a histogram of that, you get this, you get an approximation to this density. Okay? So that's why we need the epsilon to be small, otherwise we couldn't average. Because otherwise this thing wouldn't exist. We would not have relaxed. 
Not that I ever relax. But anyway, I'm German, I can't help it. So, let's write it down. dv dt is lv. So what is l? What? <laughs> so now we have to get the generator. So we have the drift term here. So that's f dx. And then we have a 1 of epsilon g dy. Okay. So we get an f of x, y, dx, v plus 1 over epsilon g of x, y, y. Okay. And now we have a diffusion term. So this would be just the generator for the deterministic part. And now we have a diffusion term here. So we get plus one half, and now you see this is squared now. We have to square this. This is, remember, the Ito formula. So you square, there had to be square here. So you get one over square root of epsilon squared, which is one over epsilon. So now these two terms here, the one that I'm going to write, are of the same order, which is why we had to write a one over epsilon squared here. So and this will be B, I call it, V, where B is just B, uh, how did I call it, beta, beta, beta transposed, okay? So this we derived, this was the, the, the formula, the, it's basically Ito formula, but it's, it's the expression for the generator for a stochastic process, okay? So now these two are the dominant terms. The 1 over epsilon are the dominant terms. So what I want, how I want to write this, I want to write this as 1 over epsilon L0 plus an L1. So my L0 would be the generator associated with the fast Y dynamics. Okay. And L1 is associated with the slow x dynamics here. Okay? So now we do epsilontics. Now we just say, okay, our v of x, y, and t, we write as a v naught of x, y, and t plus epsilon v1 of x, y, and t plus epsilon squared of v2 of x, y, and t, and so forth. So we now because we have this nice linear system, we can use this nice perturbation theory and get a result. Okay? So now what we do is we take this expansion here and bang it into here and then order, take orders uh, uh, of epsilon, right? Order in, term, uh, uh, order in orders of epsilon. Okay? So, what do we get? So this is just a formal, everything we do here is formal, right? There's, a, there's an exact theory behind it, but we, we're not going to bother about proving it, we just apply it here, okay? So we, everything we do is formal. So what's the highest order? The highest order is 1 over epsilon, okay? So at order, 1 over epsilon, what do we get? Well, we get L naught, V naught equal to 0. So let's pause here. This is, this is the, the lowest order. It's usually the easy order, but it's also the order that requires the most understanding. So like when you have a nonlinear problem, right, the, the linear problem is usually the hardest. To, if, if you've got that figured out, uh, then you kind of can guess what the nonlinear stuff does often, not always. So here, let's think what this means. L0 is the generator of just this fast process here. We assume this process is ergodic, okay? X is just, you know, again, not, X is like a constant. X isn't moving. Y is doing a lot, and X is kind of sitting there, okay? So X is a parameter, and this is now an ergodic process. So what do we know ergodic processes? We know that expectation values are constant, okay? So 
There is just that means they can be depend on x, but they do not depend on my initial condition y. They cannot depend on y. Okay. So if L naught V naught equal to zero, right? This is kind of the long. This is uh, the only solutions that we allowed in an aquatic process we established are the ones where V naught is a constant. Okay. So because since the fast dynamics is ecliptic, V naught, let me just write V naught constant is the only solution. So constant just means it does not depend on Y. It does not depend, remember this picture of the system that was non ergodic where we could define an average here, we could define an average here, but the average now would depend on do you start in here, do you start in there. That cannot happen. Okay? So it should not depend on y. So from here we follow v naught is a function of x and t only, not of y anymore. That's the only information we can get from here. Okay, but it's a very important. We get one more information from here. We get the information that L naught, that operator, I mean, if, if you're not familiar with operators, think of these things as matrices, okay? So we get here that L naught is not invertible, okay? And that will bite us, because at the next order, so order one, at order one, we have now dv naught dt, we have an L naught 1 over epsilon times V1, epsilon V1, and we have an L1 V naught. Okay. So I'm going to write this as L naught V2, sorry, V1, because we don't know what V1 is, and that's dV naught dt minus L1, where am I? V naught. Okay. So if we make a formal expansion as such here, we want that all these orders exist, right? The finite, well behaved, and so forth. Otherwise, this series doesn't make sense. So that means V1 has to exist. Okay? So what is the condition? Think of this is this is known. If we I mean we kind of not we haven't specified it yet. You see you see where we're going in a minute. But V naught is a lower order. So this is kind of the right-hand side. It's something we know. We have some information about. V1 is what we want to determine. So we have some kind of system A, X equal to B, if we think in linear algebra. Okay, so X we want. A is the L0, and B is the right-hand side here. So what are... But we know that, well, if A is invertible, great. X is A inverse B. But here L0 isn't invertible. Okay, so now we need the Fatholm alternative, right? So we need the the, uh, the condition. This is not solvable for H B, right? This is only solvable for those Bs such that they are orthogonal to a kernel of the adjoint of A. All right, so that you know from linear algebra, I hope. So what are kernel functions? So we need this is a, we now have get a condition on the right hand side, and that condition will pin down our evolution equation for V0. Right? This is a condition for the right-hand side, so it's a condition for the evolution of V0. And that will be what, that's what we're after. Okay? Then we got a PDE for V0 that only depends on X. So associated with this will be a generator. Right? DV0 is some generator V. And that generator tells us everything about the underlying ODE. Okay, which will be the averaged equation. So that's that's the strategy here. So we employ the solvability conditions to assure that this formal expansion here makes sense, that the solutions exist. Employ the solvability condition and then get evolution equations for the for the objects we are after. Okay. So let's think about the solvability condition. We need the right hand side. I'm going to write it. You know, sort of in. In this form here, so this is the right hand side, is orthogonal to some kernel function. How do we call it? 
W, okay, such that W is L naught star W is zero. Okay, so it's to be orthogonal to a kernel function of the adjoint. So the adjoint is L naught star. What does L naught star do? L naught star is the is the the the, uh, the adjoint of the generator. So that's the one that's in the Fokker-Planck equation. So the condition L naught star W equal to zero, that W is what? Hmm? That's rho infinity, exactly, right? So because L naught, our y dynamics, and this is L naught, it's a generator of the y dynamics, in, generates an invariant, uh, invariant density, rho naught, right? And it's unique. So this, there's only one single unique kernel function, and that's rho infinity. Well, this is great. So what do we write? What is our uh, uh, the solvability condition is now? That, I'll take this, you know, I mean, I wrote it here kind of in, in, in the linear algebra uh, case. So this is now an integral of our right-hand side. And now the kernel function is rho infinity of y conditioned on x dy. Okay. So these are exactly what we're doing is we just average over the invariant measure. So the solvability condition is just average the right hand side over the invariant measure. Okay? So average over V naught dt, well that's nice, because there's no y here. So this is just dv naught dt. Okay? So this is zero, that's our solvability condition. So from here we get dv naught dt minus, well, L1, so now we need to take the integral of L1, which was f of x, y, um, and then we have a d dx, or nabla x v naught, which does not depend on, uh, on y. We can take this outside of the integral. And we have our rho infinity of y, conditioned on x. And this is equal to zero. Well, what's this? It's exactly the average, right? That's the average of the slow vector field over the invariant measure, the, 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 the ergodic measure uh, of the fast dynamics. Okay? So I'm running out of space here. Let me just... This is not a nice... Uh, way to write it, but <clears throat> so what we get out of here is dv naught dt is f of x nabla x v naught. Okay, so now how do we get to this ODE here? Well, this is now a backward Kolmogorov equation. So let's call this thing here L reduced or L average. Okay. So associated with the generator L average is an ODE, and the ODE looks like this. Done. Okay. So now we derived in this perturbation theory framework, the averaged equation. Okay. And what we did is we expanded in orders of epsilon, order in order of epsilon. The only thing we used is the ergodicity of the fast process. It's the only thing we used. And then we had solvability conditions which determine the temporal evolution, which gives us a backward Kolmogorov equation that's now reduced because there's only an x, there's no y anymore. And associated uh, with that reduced generator, we have our averaged ODE. Okay? So that's averaging. Let's just take an example, see how it works. Mm 
I have one, right? Yeah. So let's take an example. So dx is x times 1 minus y squared dt. And we have dy is minus alpha over epsilon y dt plus square root of lambda over epsilon dw. So this does not depend on x here anymore. Okay, so mathematicians call this a skew product system. So now we have a fast system that drives the slow one, but the slow one does not feed back on the fast one. Okay? And this one here we recognize as an einstein uhlenbeck process. Okay? So we know what rho infinity is, so we can actually do the calculation. Okay? We discussed the, the einstein uhlenbeck process, we discussed the moments, we discussed the, uh, the, the, the uh, Gaussian invariant density and so forth. So we can use that. So the ergodic measure for of the OU process uh, is a Gaussian. And distributed with mean zero and variance lambda over two alpha. Okay. So now we just get x dot is f of x, and f of x is just the integral over this OU process Gaussian of the x. Ah, let me call this always capital X. Can take this out, and so I got one minus y squared dy. Uh, so this gives me just the one. And y squared gives me the um, gives me the uh, the variance, so this is x, and now we got one minus which was what lambda oh yeah, over two alpha. Okay, that's just y squared. That's the second moment, so that's this guy here. Okay, so you see that if lambda is less than two alpha. Our average vector field is positive, so x goes to infinity. Okay? And if lambda is less than 2 alpha, then the average vector field is negative and x would go to 0. Okay? So in this case, <coughs> you see lambda gives me, lambda gives me here the, uh, uh, the intensity of the noise. Right, multiplies how strong the uh, the noise is. So here you see that that's bigger. That when we have, when it's very noisy, we stabilize the system. So noise can be stabilizing as well. Okay. Uh, but what happens? What happens in the what happens in this case here? When lambda is two alpha, f of x is zero. So what does x do? So the average equation says, you know, you don't do anything, you just stay there. Clearly that can't be the case, because you constantly kick it. Okay. So now the question is, how do we get the stochasticity back into this deterministic equation? Okay. So in this case, averaging doesn't tell us much. Okay. So we know for averaging, um, I, didn't, I didn't state that, uh, um, but, uh, I didn't write it down, but on order times of order one, the solutions converge, okay, of the averaged equation and of the full system. Um, however, if you go to long times, that can't be true, because you will have these excursions, and if you wait long enough, you can get very big excursions, okay? So that tells us, that if we want to learn about these stochastic effects, we have to go to long time scale. So only on that really long time scale, these kicks here, these fast kicks, have time to accumulate and 
give us a deviation from this average behavior. Okay. So what we're going to do is something that I well, that I always hated as a student when you know when the lecturer just kind of wiped out things. Um, but I make the one into a two, and I call this homogenization. And all we're going to do is we go on a long time scale. So we put a one over square here, and this is now epsilon to the one. And put a one over epsilon here, and I will call this f naught, and we also can put another term in here. Okay? So all we do now is going on a long time scale. Okay? So I'm going to wipe out so that you have a chance to write this up uh, uh, somewhere. And then we do exactly the same spiel. Now we have a machinery, and we can just let it work, do the work. So we're going to do exactly the same perturbation theory, and then see where it gets us. We all need. Okay. Yeah. No. I'll, I'll show you after that how you can go. How you can go higher order here. You can't go higher order with this bit because what you're going to get are not Fokker-Planck equations, they're not probability densities. The, 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 the next orders in row, if you do the same thing in row, they would have negative parts. Okay? So you can't, you can push it and it will tell you something, but not, it won't tell you about the, the, the homogenization limit. Okay? So you're not going to get the homogenization. Which example? This one? Yes? You would need to wait for longer. So waiting for longer, I just put the 1 over epsilon, 1 over epsilon squared there. You get it? Oh, oh, oh I just put it there. Because this is no different system. This is, you know, this is a luxury. Okay? It's not related to anything from here. Okay? Just so that you could have that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's not necessary. It's just uh, nice. Th this, this will give you an average vector field. This bit here will now give you the noise contribution. Okay. So let's do the whole, whole game again. Uh, da, 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 da. Um, so we're going to go again to the backward Kolmogorov equation, but I want to have just one remark. If we were to go to the Fokker-Planck, in the Fokker-Planck picture, then what we what would hope to get is we have is the full density of the slow fast system and if we do a reduction then what we kind of do is we split this measure we write it as a product sort of independent processes of some row on x and t and this will be our reduced the density of the reduced system, so that it would solve, in this averaging case, it will solve a Liouville equation, and in the case that we're now going to discuss, this will be a Fokker-Planck equation. And this is just the, the ergodic measure of the, uh, of the fast dynamics. Okay? So this is just a remark. 
Um, so, let's do it. We now have a DDT, V is LV again, right? So what is L? Now we got one over epsilon squared as our lowest, as our highest order. We got a one over epsilon and we got an order one. Okay, so we can write our L as one over epsilon squared L naught plus one over epsilon L one plus L two, where L naught is again our um, the generator associated with the fast dynamics. L1 is the generator associated with just this bit here. So this is F0 and L2 is our luxury term in here. And again, we make a formal expansion. See, in the averaging case, we only needed to go to V1. This time you'll see we have to actually include V2. Okay, so the, the solvability condition that will give us this non-trivial evolution equation will come at the order V2, at the order 1 term. Okay? All right, so let's start. Order 1 over epsilon squared. Order 1 over epsilon squared, the lowest order we can get in V is the V0. So we hit it with L0. So it's exactly the same one. So we get L0, V0 is 0. So again, we know that the fast dynamics is ergodic. So the only solutions that are allowed here are constant solutions. So constant means that they do not depend on y. So V0, which initially is a function of x, y, and t, is now pinned to be a function of x and t only. Okay? So what's the next order? Next order is order 1 over epsilon. So we get L naught V1. And this is now, what is the other one? Now we get a V naught on L1. Okay? Uh, L1 on V naught. So minus L1 V naught. So let me write this down. This is minus f naught of x, y, nabla x, v naught. Okay, so again, we have a linear system, right-hand side, depends on v naught, which we know in some sense is from the lower order. We want, we want to get v1. We can't invert L naught, because L naught, v naught is zero, so it's a trivial uh, zero eigenmode. And we need to invoke the solvability condition. It's the same thing. We have to assure that the right-hand side is orthogonal to kernel modes of the adjoints. Kernel modes of the adjoints are exactly the invariant densities for our ergodic process. So the solvability condition here is that the kernel modes were the rho infinity of f naught of x, y, well, and this one here does not depend on y, I can take it out of the integral. Okay. Well, this thing here, that was our f of x back here. Okay. That's the average over the slow over this slow vector field here. Okay? So that's exactly the case here that we're looking at. We have to be looking at that case. If we employ this method here, we're not looking at those cases. Okay? We have to be looking at this. So from here, we know so we need to require that the average f here, so the, the f naught x, y, rho infinity, y, x, dy, 
is zero. Let me just write this as f naught equal to zero. Shorthand. Okay, in angu angular brackets. Okay, so we can't look at all those cases. We restrict it to this case here, where we can't whether the, the where averaging would give you trivial trivial dynamics. Right, nothing happens. Okay, so next order. So next order is order one. Order one is always a good one that gives you a DDT on V naught. Okay. So at order one, we get L naught V2 is DV naught DT. That's nice. And then we got minus L1 V1 minus L2 V naught. Okay? So again, right hand side has to be orthogonal to kernel mode of the adjoint of L naught. So we average the right hand side. Tells us, well, dv naught dt. There is no y in there, so I can just average uh, uh, over it easily. And now I need the average of this. Did I write it? So let me write this again at the average as in angular brackets. So this is now, and I write it formally as, uh, ah, well, let me write like this. L1 v1 plus l2 v0. Okay. Okay. So, we somehow want that this is, uh, gives me some uh, equation, you know, like there's some kind of generator here acting on v0 and then we know what the associated SD is. So let's look at those terms individually. So let's look at the easy term, which is L2 V0. So L2 was well, F1 of x, y. This is our luxury term, dx V0. So this is the average of F1 V0. So again, this term here would just give me some drift coefficient in my reduced equation. Okay? That's just the, the average, average of F1. What about this one here? So we have L1, V1. What V1, we don't know what it is, right? We only know it exists. Okay, but let's look first at the structure and let's write formally. Well, we know V1 exists because we assure the existence of V1 by the solvability condition here. Okay, so let's write formally V1 as the inverse of L1 V0, which was my right hand side. Okay. This is just formal. So this is an average over, over y. Just want to draw your attention to the structure of this. Okay? Can we already learn something about it before doing actual calculations? So we average over y, so this thing will depend on x and t. And what's in, in terms, what's in x here? Yes, please. No, that's why I say I write it formally like this. I know v1 exists, so I write formally the solution as V1 is L0 inverse on the right hand side, and there's a minus missing. Okay, this is just formal. But this thing here has a dx in, and this thing here has a dx in, and this in between might depend on x as well. So, what do you get out? You get a drift, this nabla x here. Well, you can act on this, so you get another drift term. But it would also act on here, so you're gonna get so you're gonna get a contribution nabla x, and you gotta can con get a contribution nabla x nabla x. And this will give you the diffusion, and this will give you a correction to the drift. Okay? So there is hidden in here, there is 
a backward Kolmogorov equation in it for an SDE. Okay, so let's see what that SDE is. Okay, so let's now solve for V1 properly, not just in this sort of formal way. Um, okay, so now we find explicit um, uh, an explicit for, uh, equation for V1, and I want to do this in two ways. Um, So the equation we have to solve is L naught V1 is minus L1 V naught. So this is minus F naught of xy dx V naught. Okay. So let's make an ansatz and let's write V1 is some function R of xy and we have our dx V naught just depends on t. Okay. Note that we can always add a kernel mode of L0. So any function that only depends on x and t, if I hit it with L0, gives me zero. So you can always add such a kernel mode here. Okay. But as would turn out, these kernel modes don't matter. In, in, the, in, the in, in, in the calculation that we're going to do here, so we just ignore it. Okay? They will not alter the result. Okay? You can check that. You can, like, once we've done this, you can just say, okay, let's just carry this R through and see what happens. But I, I don't want to do that now. I'm just telling you that, and you can verify it. Okay? Okay. Um, so in simple examples, you can actually make an ansatz for R as a function of Y, usually polynomials or something, and then you can solve it explicitly. Uh, but I want to do this in a sort of, I want to get a general um, expression for it that tells you a little bit more about the structure of these reduced uh, systems. So the function R solves what's called the cell problem. So the cell problem would be L naught on R is minus right hand side F naught of X and Y. Because the nabla X V naught we cancelled on both sides. Okay? That's absorbed already in our R. In our uh, in our ansatz for V1. Okay. So the solution R exists because of our solvability condition. Right? F naught integral over, over, over the, uh, of f naught over the invariant density, fast density is zero. So this really has a solution. It's solvable. Okay? So remark, this has a solution since f naught average zero. Okay. Um, so now let's use this solution to express minus the, the, this expression here. So we got minus L1 V1. So we write this as minus L1 L0 minus 1 L1 V0. Sorry, this is minus. Um, so this is now L1 and L0, L1, V0, I express now through my R and write this as R nabla x V0. This is an R. Okay. And my L1 was my F0 dx. And now this will be R dot V0. And I can write this now. So now you see how, so I just use the R as a solution here, right, as a placeholder for the solution, so that we don't have to write the L node inverse. Okay? And now we can see we get 
A drift contribution, if we hit, if we just hit the R with the, uh, uh, with the derivative, and we get a diffusive term if the, the, uh, the, the derivative here acts on that term. Okay? So we can write this as, I'm first going to write down the result, F0, then R transposed, and now matrix, this is a matrix, so matrix in a product with, this is our diffusive term, and then we have this acting on the R times, and I'm going to define how uh, uh, an, a gradient x acts on a, a vector valued function, uh, f naught. So this one here I just define as dRi over dxj. Okay? And this one, yeah, yeah, this one we already had, right? So, but uh, let me define it again. This would be d v naught, d squared v naught, dxi, dxj. Okay? So now we have a reduced backward Kolmogorov equation. Or maybe I'll leave it here. This I don't need anymore. So now we have a reduced backward Kolmogorov equation and that reads as dv naught dt is equal to, well we got our f1 and we have another drift term cutting from here um, average over dx R, this is a matrix, F naught, dx, V naught, and we have a diffusion term. And let me write it this way with a 2 here. Okay. So now we have. This is sort of our drift, and this bit here is our diffusion. And associated with that, we have an SDE now. Okay, so the stochasticity of this underlying fast stochastic process seeps up into the slow time scale on very long time scales. Okay. Uh, Okay, so in order for this to be diffusion, this has to be positive definite. Okay, and you can, we're not going to do that, I'm just going to tell you this. You can show that this is actually positive definite. Okay, so if it's positive definite, I can write this matrix as some kind of matrix A, A transposed. Okay, so we're going to write this as one half. I'll uh, write this here actually. Is that what I did done here? I'm going to use the same notation. I'm getting confused. Writing. Ah, here we go, yep. Yeah. Uh, so I want to write this as one of, yeah, I call it A, A, A transposed. Um, and now we would have our, S our SDE would have the drift term here and would just have an A on DW, okay? But to solve this, there could be several A's solving this equation. So what does it tell us? That brings us back to that one comment here. Well, all we're interested in are uh, averages, right? Who said that? Who, who wanted only the averages? Someone who was sitting there. You did. Right? You see, 
what you're going to get out. So you have a backward cosmography equation here. You have something like this, and you want to express it as some kind of AA transpose, and then you know the A is the diffusion in your dx is drift coefficients dt, plus now your A dwt. So this is not uniquely defined here. So you would, can get different SDEs down here. Okay? But all these different SDEs, they will have the same average behavior. And that's where you, again, your, your comments are, well, we're not really interested in getting the exact pass, you know, of, 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 of a process. We're interested not just in the mean, but in the statistics. Okay? Before in the average equation, you were only interested in the mean. Okay? And what we're trying to do now is we're interested in the statistics. So we also want you know, other moments to, to uh, um, behave the same way. Okay? So we can get different passwise behavior, but since AA transpose is fixed, we get the same backward cosmography equation, so the the averages, and also in the, uh, if we go to the adjoint uh, um, picture of the Fokker-Planck equation, the, uh, the densities will behave the same way. So the statistics will be recovered, not the pathwise. So this was a good comment, and uh, I think in the first lecture or so, when you say, well, we're only interested in the average behavior. It's not quite the, uh, just the average, but it's the statistics that we want to recover. We're not interested in individual behaviors here. Okay. I don't want to go into this. You, you can show it. it. It would require some kind of tedious calculations. No, no, it's not. This is a completely... This is anything, right? That's right. And again, we're not interested. We, we have no information about this usually. We only have, I mean, usually observations. We usually have on slow, but not on the kind of unresolved variables. Okay, on the fast variables are often unresolved. Um, so yeah, again, the argument is, okay, we don't know what they're actually doing, but we want to recover the statistics. No? Not on on one over epsilon, yeah, yeah, that's right. So in here, this is now on order one over epsilon squared. Okay. I'm in, into these time scales, I'm going to go after when we talk about deterministic uh, systems more. Then it's much more clear why we need that long time scale. At the moment, it's kind of you know focus focus here with epsilons, right? But there's actually a reason, and the reason I'm going to tell you now is the central limit theorem why we need that time scale. Oh, this was, you know, you remember we started, ignore everything that's green and put a square root here. That's how we started and did averaging, okay? No, there was no one by epsilon, exactly. So ignore all the green stuff. And now we just go on a much longer time scale. So we make, we put, we, we, we transform time in some sense to one of epsilon here, right? So we put a one of epsilon here, one of epsilon here, well, and here you have to scale differently. Okay. That's right, if you ignore that. Yeah. So that's our luxury term, right? Where we just say, okay, okay, we've done that, but uh, let's just put another one in. And that one doesn't do any harm here, that just gives me average behavior. Okay. That's right, that's correct. That's right. That's right. Okay, um, this is not very illuminating so far because it's, you know, the solution of the RN. I mean, it's illuminating and so far as we know we somehow achieved our goal that there is some underlying SDE now, so we actually have, a, you know, here there's no noise term in here. We could have put a noise term in there, but we didn't. Okay, but the effective equation is now stochastic. 
Okay. So I want to now, in the, in the uh, next lecture, I want to talk about, I want to look in a different way at this uh, cell problem and give you more sort of physical interpretation of those terms. Okay? So what, what, what are these diffusion coefficients? How are they related to the fast? What, 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 do they, what, do they, what information do they carry? Okay? So that, that, that will be in the, in, the, in the next lecture. Are there questions? So longer time scales are different questions to going to higher orders, right? So longer time scales is different to the question that Amit asked about going higher orders in, in V naught. Um, so why do we stop at this order? It's because of the central limit theorem, because we get, like you can sum up more and more and more variables, but you will still get the noise, okay? That's correct. You already, you already satisfy this theorem at that order, so you don't need to sum up more variables. Because, see, what you're doing here is you integrate. I mean, the, your solution x will be an integral over this. The y enters through here, so you're summing up if this is fast and very, you know, and a fast draw now from all this, you know, from your invariant measure, you will sum up independent random variables. Okay? So you only need to go to one of epsilon squared to satisfy the central limit theorem. Okay? But I, I, I make that more clear in, in, in writing in, in the next lecture. Clearer, I guess. Okay? Coffee. <laughs>